After defeating a colony of Mirkwood spiders, you discover that the eight-legged abominations had been gathering slaves for a host of orcs. You believe Bilbo Baggins was taken south alongside other prisoners. Before deciding on your next course of action, you capture an unpleasant creature lurking about your camp. To your surprise, the creature appears to know the name Baggins. The creature already looks beaten and bruised, so you attempt to use kindness to extract information. However, after being fed both food and gentle words, the nasty thing remains thoroughly unhelpful. Before dawn, a more pressing problem arises. As dull grey seeps into the black edges of night, flying dark shapes begin to swoop under the branches above you. They rapidly multiply, and before long it's as if you've been caught inside a black whirlwind. I am Aragorn, son of Erethorn. I am Arwen, Elrond's daughter. I shall claim full amends for every fall and stopped too. King under the mountain. You decide trusting Smeagol is worth the risk. If the creature knows a way to get ahead of the caravan, you'll have a significant advantage in rescuing Bilbo from the orcs. As you follow Smeagol through the thick vegetation, the terrain begins to dip. Before long, the air is laced with mist and the soil grows spongy. You're being led into a swamp. <sighs> Swampses! Yes! Cool, nice Swampses! Smeagol explains. With foxes, fishes, and snakes as precious. Tasty. He pauses to crane his neck and sniff the air. Huh. Smeagol looks to find white spot masters. Safe way through mist and bogs as oxes and wagons as must go around, you see. No tasty frogs for oxes. Smeagol continues to sniff around the area looking for some landmark, some sign that he's on the right trail. He suddenly smells something, unexpected. The thickets begin to rustle, the air begins to hum, and unkind things emerge.
As you wade along precarious and narrow strips of land, soft ground sucking at your boots, while Smeagol encourages you onwards. You glimpse a tall shape above the fog some distance ahead. Could this be Smeagol's Hill of Haunted Stones? No, no, Process. Not Cold Hill, not Black Stones, not Smeagol's. He croaks, bobbing his head at your foolishness. Haunted Hill, uh, further south. Smeagol, not go there. He sniffs around the edges of a nearby pool, adding, Old tower of tall men, that is. Rotten and broken. Oxes and wagons and battles rest there tonight. Without warning, he darts headfirst into the pool with a splash, emerging with a wriggling carp between his teeth. He slithers back to dry land and begins to eat it with glee. Suddenly, the water explodes and a giant serpent rises from the pool, its forked tongue undulating in anticipation. A half-eaten fish is thrown aside in panic. Stand alone! Ball riven 
Rondell! As darkness thickens, orange light from orc fires bathe the dilapidated walls of the ruined tower. Your spirits sink as you witness the last prisoners, no longer wrapped in cocoons, marched into the stronghold. Orcs and goblins seem to be everywhere. How will you get to Bilbo? And if you do, how will you get away? You decide to chance entering the tower through a small door in the tower's eastern side. As you quietly approach, the door snaps open and a group of armed orcs emerge. The last of them brandishes a large key with which it proceeds to lock the door. As the door locks with a dull clunk, the orcs make to start their patrol. Gandalf, and Gandalf means me.
serve no man. I'll put an arrow in your guts. Full ribbon down! Oh, my lad. After sneaking through the tower door, you emerge into a huge chamber full of reeking supplies, fallen stones and intruding vegetation. A number of large chains emerge from openings in the floor along the walls. The chains terminate into an iron box bolted to the far side of the chamber. The box bristles with rusty hooks and mechanical wheels. You glide quietly through the room, keen to avoid attention. You peek into the connecting rooms, hoping for clues as to where the orcs are storing their prisoners. Steps are suddenly heard on the flagstones coming in your direction. After a few moments, a smallish orc enters the chamber to rummage through supplies. The light of its torch happens to catch one of your buckles, causing the orc to glance lazily in your direction. For a second, it seems not to have understood what it's seeing, but then recognition flares in its ugly face.
not stand alone. Smeagol has betrayed you. Somehow the villain has triggered the chamber's mechanism, causing one side of the floor to abruptly drop. Your legs slip violently as you flail down the steep angle, fingers desperately grasping for any hold. Amidst the cacophony of sliding rubble, supplies and orc bodies, you catch sight of Smeagol dangling from one of the chains above. <laughs> Goodbye, Sis Masters! He shrieks. Baggins and precious. For Smeagol, they are mine! His shrill voice fades as you slide past the lip of the slanted floor and drop into a rancid darkness. You blink twice before meeting the wet ground with a mucky plop, debris raining down around you. Then a falling barrel lands directly on your head and everything goes black.